Today's message, I want to talk to you today about, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? I'm going to talk to you about who you are in this world so that you can understand the authority and the power that you have in this world. So we're going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So if you got your Bibles, you can open up there to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 24, and here's what it says. I know a man in Christ, this is Paul writing to the church of Corinth, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. I would like you to understand that there are multiple heavens. Paul acknowledges a place called the third heaven. And according to the biblical writings and according to the Greek understanding of the mindset, New Testament was written in Greek, Old Testament written in in Hebrew. And according to the Greeks' mind, that the first heaven was the atmosphere that we breathe. And it virtually went to the highest point on planet Earth, which is Mount Everest. Is that the highest point on planet Earth? So from the ground level to planet to the top of Mount Everest is considered the first heaven. The second heaven is considered everything above that. That's your solar system. That's your, your stars, your moons, your other planets. And the third heaven is the place where God lives. It's a place where God lives. Now, Paul continues to say this. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not God, I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which are not lawful for a man to utter. Paul, at one time in his life, was actually taken in a daytime vision to the third heaven into a place called paradise. Paradise is the place where God resides and God lives. Paul uses that word. When Jesus was dying on the cross, one of the guys dying on the cross next to him said, remember me when you get into your kingdom. And he said to that man, today you will be with me in paradise. Well, the paradise that Jesus was referring to on the cross was one that was under the ground, under the earth, also known as Abraham's bosom. Under the ground at the time of Jesus, there were several, several compartments. One is called hell, one is called paradise, and then there's another one called the bottomless pit, which you find out information on that from the book of Revelation. Well, the paradise that was underneath the earth was removed when Jesus was raised from the dead, and everybody in paradise, or Abraham's bosom, was taken to heaven to the third heaven, the presence of God. The Bible tells us that to be absent from our body is to be present with the Lord. On the day that you die, instantly your body goes to, your spirit goes to heaven and to be in the presence of God. And what you need to realize is, is there is a heaven, there is a place where God resides. That place where God resides is not in this world. You can't get in a rocket ship and keep going and one day eventually get there. The third heaven is actually a different, what would you call it? What do, we, what do they call them in the movies nowadays where there's a parallel universe? A realm? A third, like a realm? Um, dimension. That's the word I'm, I'm looking for, dimension. It's in a different dimension. And you know, you've, if you've seen movies where they have the, the city is doing one thing in this dimension and the same city is doing another thing in this dimension. And it, you know, those are cool movies. You should watch some of them. But, <laughs> but what's happening is there is a dimension in creation called the spirit world. It is called the world of the spirit, that you literally are existing in two separate worlds. One is in this natural world that we call earth and we call the natural world things that we can feel taste touch smell and then there is another dimension called the spirit world paul used the word paradise he talked about the third heaven what i want you to realize is there are two different worlds that you live in currently you live in both worlds if you are a believer in jesus christ if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have asked him to be in your life, if you've asked to be in his life, whatever you've done to believe on Jesus Christ, that made you a citizen of the spiritual world. If you have never done that, you live in one world, the natural world. If you have made a commitment to Jesus, you live in two worlds at the exact same time. Two dimensions, 
two, two realms, two different spheres, two different places. You actually live and are a citizen of heaven and a citizen of earth at the exact same time. What you need to realize in, in, in that is that there is, there is a world. Hold on one second, please. My um, notebook messed up. There we go. <clears throat> the, there is a, there are, in each world there are laws and powers. In each of the world there are different laws. In the, in the realm of the spirit world, in the, in the dimension of God, there are laws and powers that operate. There are principalities, there are rulers. When you read in the Bible about the dimension that God lives in that we call the spirit world, you'll find out there are angels in positions of authority and angels that are positions of military and angels who are citizens of this realm or this place, what we call the third heaven or the spirit world. There are different kinds of angels that have different levels of authority, and there are different kinds of people. When you read the book of Revelation, you find out in the throne room of God, which must be a not absolutely big throne room, because he's got a room where he has a throne, the Father, and the Son sits at his right hand, and then there's 12 thrones on one side, 12 thrones on another. I mean, that's a lot of space. That's a pretty big place. But there are people who sit in those different thrones. And so what we need to realize is in each world, there are laws that govern that world. There are laws that govern this world. It's an amazing thing when you are in the first heaven, according to the Greeks, you can, you can just use your lungs to breathe. But you go into outer space, you need a space suit. You need something that holds oxygen for you. You need something that protects you or you're not going to survive because you have to respect those laws that are out there and you don't have oxygen when you get out to the moon. You don't have enough to breathe. I don't, I'm not a scientist, but I, I've seen enough movies. That makes me an authority. You know? And so what, what you need to realize is that you have to honor and respect the laws of the world. There's also laws of this world. And the laws of this world are like the law of gravity. You have to honor and respect that. If you get on a ladder and you start climbing to uh, the roof of your home or your apartment or whatever, you just start climbing onto a, a structure, you better respect the law of gravity. Because if you disrespect it and you step a little bit off balance, you could go falling down. You could get hurt because you don't respect those laws. Each world has different laws. Each world's laws are, they work by who you are in that world. You need to realize that you are, you are you a believer or not a believer will also determine whether you get authority to use those laws. When you are um, a non-believer, you get to use the laws of this world and you can manipulate things, you can lie, you can steal, you can be honest, you can, you can be kind, you can be mean. Those different laws that, that produce different reactions in this world are all available to you and you can use them to your, your own extent and you can use them for your benefit or your disadvantage. There are certain things in this world, if you just do right, can bless you and other people. If you understand, how, if, you, if you know anything about investments and you make some investments and you put some money in something and you know that money is going to grow, it could grow without the spirit laws whatsoever. They're just natural laws that God put into place. There are other laws that, that operate in this world and it's amazing. They're simply amazing. You stick your hand in fire, guess what? The law of burn happens. I mean, you get burned. I mean, it hurts. You touch something hot without the proper equipment, you can get hurt. What I'm trying to communicate is there are laws that work all the time, and there are laws that work all the time in the spirit world. You will sur survive and thrive in each world if you follow the laws that are built for that world. But here's the thing. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you have been given certain authority from the spirit world in this world that allows you a better place in this world. It allows you more authority than a person who's not a believer. So I ask the question, do you know who you are? Do you know that you are a citizen of the spirit world and this world? 
And are you utilizing the laws of the spirit world in this world to help other people? When our, our grandson, he's four years old now, but when he was three, um, one of our grandsons, he, uh, so a year ago, him and I were playing and we're doing something. So then we started watching on his little tablet uh, one of his favorite shows. And his favorite shows has these animated trucks and cars. Do you know the name of it? The, Blades. Is it Blades or Blaze? Blaze. Yes, that's exactly right. I bet your son watches it. Yeah. Okay, Blaze is, is the show. And what Blaze is, it's these different kinds of trucks and that they, they move around and they can talk to the guy driving it, you know, and they talk to each other. You know, it's all animation, you know, and it's all teaching a child some new and proper way of behaving to your friends and things like that. So we're watching it and he's going and I'm asking him about this guy and this guy and he, he, he's telling me about this one truck. He goes, it has powers. I said, what do you mean it has powers? And he means it has powers, you know, like an animated person, like uh, um, Iron Man has powers, Spider-Man has powers. You know, different, they have different powers and Superman has powers. So he's telling me about the powers that this truck has. And this truck can do certain things. It can, it can go in water, it could fly if it had to. It's kind of like a transformer, it turns into whatever it needs to turn into. Anyway, for him and I, we were having a great time, and it was all kind of a you know, fun little thing, talking about it and connecting with the powers, and they realized, you have powers. See, in, in most people's thinking, we're thinking like a Marvel movie with something shooting out, you know, like, uh, what's that, the um, Captain, the Captain America that's the girl now? Captain Marvel. Yeah, Marvel. Captain Marvel. <laughs> So, you know, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, you know, she can fly through the air, she can go into outer space, she can retrieve Iron Man, save his life, bring him back to Earth, you know, kind of thing. Doing all these kind of stuff, because she has powers. Did you know you have powers? You have powers. But if you don't know the powers that have been given to you from the other dimension, you won't know how to use them in this dimension. The Bible says that the person who believes in Jesus Christ, every single one of them, doesn't matter age, it's not age appropriate, it's ageless. Every person who is a believer in Jesus Christ has the power to lay hands on the sick and the sick be healed. They have the power. So, well, if I tried that power, it didn't work. Well, just because you tried it doesn't mean you don't have it. Well, you need to realize you need to embrace the powers that are yours and what belongs to you and what, what is actually yours, you need to understand. You must know who you are in heaven in order to make changes in this world. You must know that you are a born-again child of God. You must know that you've been empowered by Christ. You must know that you've been empowered by him to do things in this world. You have been empowered to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You have been empowered to receive things from God. You have been empowered to have the wisdom of God. The Bible says that you have access to the mind of Christ. That's amazing power. Have you ever been in a situation when you're trying to figure out what to do? I remember this years ago, before I was a preacher, I was an automobile mechanic. And when I was an automobile mechanic, I found myself working um, on automobiles, blah, 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 blah. And then I got uh, a different job, and I was in Costa Mesa, and I was doing transmissions. And my, my job was to take out an old transmission, get a rebuilt transmission, and put it in. Well, as an automobile mechanic, I'd never done that. I've never, I never did transmissions. So someone had to show me how to do transmissions. And, and now being in a place where I'm, I'm working on a car that no one showed me how to do that car. And so in, I'm in, in that car, I'm thinking, okay, how do I do this? And I am a child of God. I am a Christian. I am filled with the Spirit of God. And so I'm underneath a car, and I'm praying over a transmission. Because I'm asking God what to do with this transmission. Because there's this bolt that you can't get to that you're supposed to remove. And there's always a bolt you can't get to and you're supposed to remove. There's always one. And so I had to figure it out, and what I'm doing is I'm praying, and I'm asking God for wisdom. How do I do this? And all of a sudden, it comes to my head, try this. Have you ever had that experience? 
It's the mind of Christ coming into operation. It's one of your powers. And all of a sudden I could see how to do it differently. And when I, I didn't see that before, and when I tried what I saw, it worked. And I realized that is one of our powers that's being in the mind of Christ. So what I'd like to do is the first thing I want you to do to understand your powers is I want to look at what God did for Jesus. Because once we know what he did for Jesus, and then we know what, how that works for the church, we can operate in our powers. And God wants us to operate in our powers. In fact, that's what Encounter 2019 is all about in a couple of weeks when we gather for that weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which is going to be a powerful weekend. You want to make sure you bring your friends who are hurting, bring your friends who are sick. We believe in God for the powers of Christ to operate in people to be delivered and healed. We are believing for instant healings, miracles. We are believing for the biggest things possible. We have our prayer team praying every day for people who haven't even come to church yet, but they're going to be here that weekend. We're believing God to touch people because we're tapping into our powers. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 and 22, it says this, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Now, hear what these verses are saying. That God the Father raised, he worked in Christ and he raised him from the dead and he put him at a place at the right hand of himself in the heavenly places. And then this is what God the Father did for the resurrected son. He empowered him with all powers and he put him far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Here's what he said. I am giving you the greatest position of authority. I am giving you authority over every name that is known today and any name that will ever come in the future. I am giving you position over every power and principality that is known today and anyone we'll create in future ages. In other words, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and was buried in the ground, was resurrected by God the Father and then ascended into heaven and placed in a place of authority and position. I mean, this guy is above, what's his name? Thor. He's above Thor's dad. He is above everything. Jesus Christ has been given authority over every power that's possible, over every name that is named. Now I want you to realize something. Fear is a name. And you can conquer fear with the name of Jesus. Cancer is a name. You can conquer cancer with the name of Jesus. Tuberculosis is a name. Poverty is a name. Oppression is a name. In fact, everything that weighs you down has a name. And you can use the name of Jesus to overcome it. That in it, he is not just barely over cancer, he's far above it. He's far above. So here's what Jesus does. He's sitting on his throne... Jesus sits on his throne. God honors him with power. So, I mean, we, we take in every Transformer, every Marvel hero, everybody that's ever been endowed with power by some writer and have given it all into one embodiment called Jesus Christ. I mean, he can go through the air and rescue Iron Man without breathing. He can do anything. He can go to the deepest parts of the ocean, to the highest places in the universe. Jesus can do it all, and he has all power. He demonstrated on earth the power that he had as a man who was obedient to God's word, not as a man who was exalted at a throne above everything. 
When you read about Jesus in the four Gospels, and you read about him turning water into wine, you read about that 12-year-old that he raised from the dead, you read about Lazarus who was dead for four days and he raised him from the dead. When you read about all these miracles and feeding 5,000 people you know, with a little bit of food, when you read about all of those things, you are reading about a man obedient to God, not the Christ at the throne with all power which means he has more power today than he did then. And then what's he do with his power? He's been given authority and power, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. God the Father said, everything must submit to you, and I give you all power, all authority, and you are the head over all things, and you are the head of the church. The Bible clearly communicates that the church is the body of Christ. It communicates that wherever Christ is, there is the church. The church today is empowered by the resurrected Christ, not the man walking on earth called Jesus. Jesus made this statement. The, the miracles that I do, they will do also, and greater than these they will do. You'll find it in the book of Luke. And Jesus is communicating the reason we would do greater miracles than he did is because he's now in a higher position of authority than he's ever been. And he has all authority and all power and he's working it through the church. But the church doesn't realize we are a citizen of this world called, or a dimension called the spirit world, the third heaven, paradise, and we are a citizen in this world called earth. And what we need to realize is that there is a portal that goes from that throne to us. And it's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came into our lives in order for us to walk in our powers. You have powers over everything according to this scripture. You can change things by prayer. You can change things by faith. You can change things by wisdom. You can change things by hope. There are tools that have been given to us. Does that make us all an expert in spiritual authority and power because we are a citizen? No, it doesn't. There's a whole bunch of citizens, a whole bunch of citizens in the United States right now that do not understand all the authority rights that they have as a citizen. And we need to live in our rights. And we need to live in the rights that belong to us because we're also a citizen of heaven. Philippians 2, verses 9 and 11 say this, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those things in heaven and those things on earth and of those under the earth. Not only is he clearly communicating that he has all authority in heaven, he has all authority on earth, he also has authority over the dead. So every zombie that shows up in your life, you can knock it down with the name of Jesus. Amen. You have authority over dead things, you have, which means this. What's dead in your past that keeps haunting you right now? And we can destroy it through prayer. We can realize we have the power of God working in us to knock it down, to get it out of our life. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. These are things that God the Father did for Jesus. Now what I'd like to look at is what God did for us. We get these things through him, but there's some scriptures that really pertain to us. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. According to this scripture, you have been empowered with the powers of Christ in heaven, but you're still living here. Which means you have the right to utilize them here. You have the right to go to prayer and be heard by God the Father, the creator of all things. You have the right to have your prayers answered. You have, your, your, you have the right to have restoration in relationship, restoration in finances, restoration in your body. What it's really referring to is us, uh, us hearing the wisdom of God in heaven and living that wisdom in this earth. I'm trying to communicate to you, you are more powerful 
than a transformer. And Bumblebee has nothing on you. You need to realize that you are more powerful than Captain Marvell. You are more powerful than Spider-Man, even as a teenager. You need to realize you have been empowered, but we have been so misguided in our powers that we haven't operated in them. Did you see the latest Spider-Man movie? Some of you have? Okay. Okay, spoiler alert. No. Uh, <laughs> plug your ears. I'll, okay, and this you can hear. This won't, this won't be a spoiler alert. What you need to know is the movie begins in trying to communicate to this young man the powers that have been entrusted to him, and he has to learn how to use them right. You need to realize that in this world, Christ has entrusted you with powers and you have to learn how to use them right. You are not supposed to be a normal human. You're supposed to be a superhuman. You're supposed to realize that at any time, in any place, in any location, you have the right to pray. You have the right to lead people to the Lord. I, I tell this story sometimes and it just seems fitting here because it dropped in my heart and I always take that as a sign of the Holy Spirit uh, giving me something to communicate, but I talk about our son. We have six children, three boys, three girls. Our middle son, his name's Stephen. He had just celebrated the other day his sixth year of sobriety, and he is super committed to Jesus Christ, and he's helping a, a church in Nevada in a prison ministry, starting a prison ministry, and he's really being used by God in a very, very powerful way, but he had a tough, he had a tough um, 15 years. He had a tough 15 years with addictions and things, in and out of prison and stuff. And um, when he was 18, he was hanging around kids, you know, and all the kids went to Esperanza and they were just hanging around and they were drinking and they all had beer and there's 18 to 22 year old kids in, in this thing. And they're, they're, the subject of God comes up. And it didn't matter though, it, one thing that he always did is he always defended God. No matter, I mean, he could be getting high, but he's going to stand up for Jesus. <laughs> and in this conversation, either with a beer in his hand, and they're a little bit, you know, a little, a little high, he's talking to these kids, and, this, and they, they start talking about death and, and eternity, and he leads this one boy to Jesus. Gets born again. Gets born again. Ten days later, that boy's dead. He was goofing off, hanging on to a, uh, a Jeep, a bunch of kids on the Jeep, you know, what boys do in high school. They're all trying to, how many people can get on this Jeep and let's go down the road? And he slipped and fell, hit his head, and, and died. That boy would not be in heaven today if Stephen had not boldly communicated who Jesus Christ is. Even in his his state of fleshly, fleshed out, he heard the voice of the Holy Spirit communicate through him. He stepped into the powers of the heavenly realm and communicated clearly life. And that young man said yes to Jesus. I went to that young man's funeral. This place was packed, just tons of kids. The parents got up. And the parents were weeping. The parents were talking. But they all talked hopeless. Like his life is over. No one talked about, I wanted to, but it wasn't appropriate. I wanted to walk up in the middle of that funeral and say, he accepted Jesus just 10 days ago. He's in heaven. You know, but it just, the, it, the atmosphere wasn't that way. It, that probably would have started a riot. Um, but I, I went back and thinking about, even when we are not, obedient constantly in our daily actions, God still doesn't withdraw the powers that you have. And here he is talking to this young man. This young man says yes to Jesus, not knowing that the Holy Spirit probably is looking for anyone to work with because he knows what's going to happen in 10 days to this young man. And so 
He's, he works through a vessel, and if you're just there listening, it doesn't matter where you're at, what's going on, you can tap into the powers of heaven, and they can flow through you, and that man went from hell to heaven in one moment. And that's what's exciting. Our so ultimate goal is let's get everybody to heaven. And that you have been blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 1.20 which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. It says that we're sitting on that throne. Get this. The throne I talked to you about just a little while ago, that the Father is there and Jesus is at the right hand, and then he, in, he honors him with the greatest authority of all authority and lifts him up above every name that's ever named and to be named. He said that he did it for us at the same time. That is a powerful Bible verse. He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. That same authority, that's why I say that the authority you have today is empowered by the resurrection of Jesus, not the man walking obedient to the Lord. There is the man Jesus who was born of the Virgin Mary, and the Bible tells us that he set aside his deity to walk in his humanity. There's this fancy word when you go to Bible college and study and stuff, call it hypostatic union. Apostatic union is man and God combined. And that Jesus Christ is this living person. And that there are some theologians who believe that when he fed the 5,000, he did it because he was God. The Bible com clearly communicates that he set aside his, his godly powers to show what man could do by being obedient. But then when he was raised from the dead, he was given even more authority and more power, and then he gave it to us where we work together. We are infused with him. We are connected with him. We are wired in Christ. Now get this. This, this can blow your mind. I mean, thank God for Marvel. This allows us to at least uh, uh, kind of get it. But, but think of this. You have two DNAs. You have a DNA that you got from your parents that's in this world, and you have a DNA that you got from Christ himself. Because the Bible says that when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. And the Bible says that that's something that's never existed before. When you were born again by accepting Jesus into your heart, you still have the DNA of your parents in your physical body, but you got the DNA of God in your spirit. You have two DNAs. No one else has that. That is no, there is no one else that has that. Only believers, people who have never accepted Christ, do not have two DNAs. They have one. And you have a second DNA. And that DNA makes you a family in the family of God. It makes you a son and a daughter of Christ, of God. A brother or sister of Christ himself. And that DNA that comes from God the Father that flows through Christ is inside you. And, it is, and you have it because you sit in heavenly places in Christ. It says that we sit together in heavenly places. In the Greek, that's present tense. That's not future it's present tense. It means right now. Right now you sit in this wonderful, soft, great chair with lots of leg space, just like first class. And you sit in heaven with Jesus. You are there at the same time. It says in Ephesians 6, 12, for he who... For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, I want you to understand, in the spirit world, there is a dark side. There's a dark side to the spirit world. There's a light side to the spirit world. The light side is Christ and God the Father and the angels. The dark side is Satan and the fallen angels and the demonic spirits. And the demonic spirits do move people in this world to move against you. The demonic spirits have rights and authority to talk to anybody in this world and to try to get them to follow them. And they will be used to push your button. 
You need the discernment of spirits. You need to understand when you are battling a person that's just an idiot to an individual that's listening to a demonic spirit. And most people have no clue they're listening to a demonic spirit. They're just being demonic. They're just being mean. I'm telling you, anybody who walks into a school and pulls out a rifle and shoots people is demon-possessed. And the world will not face the truth. The truth is the demonic power behind the individual. You walk into a theater and you start shooting people that you've been listening to the voice of a demon. A demon that wants blood, a demon that needs death, a demon that wants human sacrifice. And you'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. And the press has no clue. The world has no clue. They just say, take away guns. How about take away the demonic powers? And we need to walk in more of our authority and more of what belongs to us so that we can see God move more in more people's lives. There are two celebrations that that have been given to us in Jesus to remind us of how powerful we are. The spirit world, Christ himself, has left two celebrations for us. And these two celebrations are number one, water baptism. In fact, on October the 6th, after the noon service, we're doing a water baptism. If you've never been baptized in water, that's the day to do it. We'll we'll do a water baptism, get you baptized in water, and we're going to see God just do great things in people's lives. On October 6th, we're doing a water baptism. Water baptism is a celebration to remind us of how powerful we are. The second thing that we have is receiving communion. These are the two celebrations that Jesus had left. Every noon service, we have our communion elements and our communion tables over here against the wall. And they are available during our song portion where you can just go at any time, self-serve, buffet style, take your stuff back to your seats, have your communion, dump the cup in the the dispenser, the trash um, dispenser, Uh, But receiving of communion is also a celebration of the powers that we have. We are supposed to remember, I'm empowered by heaven. Earth wants to tell you about your failures all the time. Earth wants to tell you about people who don't like you. Earth wants to remind you about things you didn't do correct and things you don't have. Earth wants to always point out what's what's wrong, but heaven wants to point out what's right. Heaven wants to tell you how great you are. Heaven wants you to understand who you are in Christ and the powers that you have. There are two powerful acts that we can do in this world that bring the very holy presence of God into this world. Two powerful acts that we can do. The first one is worship. When we worship God, God calls it holy. Here in this world, In the spirit world, we read in the Bible that they're worshiping God all the time. They're worshiping God. There are angels that just circle God. I mean, everywhere he goes, they're right there circling him. And they're they're singing, holy, holy, holy. And there are angels that bow before him. There are celebrations in heaven. There are different holidays and festival days in heaven where they are celebrating God all the time. But here in this world, it has to be an act a citizen of heaven decides to lift their voice, clap their hands, raise their hands, jump, dance, bow before the Lord. These are all different expressions of worship, of worship. Do you know why you pray over your food? You don't pray over your food just to make it clean. It's an act of worship. Thank you for this meal. It's a thanksgiving for what God has provided. And so then you are thanking God for what he has done for you and that you are worshiping him. The second way that we can bring the holy presence of God into this world is the giving of our finances. People go, whoa, how is that? The Bible clearly communicates that whatever we give to the Lord becomes holy. When we give our tithes and our offerings to the Lord, when we act and we give to the kingdom of God, we are communicating something that has come from heaven to this earth. God declares it holy, and the holy presence of God is in this place at that time. And we are declaring to the darkness of the spirit world that we are walking in light. 
we are walking in the power of God. There are two powerful gifts that we receive from God in this world to help us walk in the power of God. The first one is the wisdom of God, the mind of Christ. In the wisdom of God and having the mind of Christ, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the ability to walk in the wisdom of God. I gave you that car example when I was working on a transmission, but it happens everywhere. Whether you're working on a spreadsheet or you're watching little children in a nursery, we need the wisdom of God. We need the presence of God. The second thing that we can have that are, is a powerful gift for this world is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, accompanied by the gifts of praying in tongues. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the receiving of the Holy Spirit where that resident of heaven himself comes and dwells inside you, and he gives you a language that originated in heaven. A language that is able to communicate, and we call this speaking in tongues or praying in tongues, and that language gives us the ability to communicate to God beyond this realm. It's a, it's a language from another realm. I mean, even Star Trek had its own language with Spock. And some people in this world spoke it. But what I'm trying to communicate is the Holy Spirit has a language that allows you to speak from within to heaven. And that's available to everybody. You have two powerful gifts, two powerful celebrations that God wants to do, and two powerful acts that you can do in this world. Here's what I'm, my whole goal today is who are you? Do you want to be a citizen of just this world, or do you want to be a citizen of both? Do you want to take the powers and what the abilities that you receive from the spirit world and bring them into this world so that you can walk in your powers. You are powerful if you have accepted Jesus Christ. It doesn't start with getting certain Bible knowledge. It starts with you acknowledging who you are in Christ. And then it starts there and gets better and more powerful as you understand who you are the authorities you have. You have authority over demonic spirits. You wrestle regularly with demonic spirits. You have authority over them. You can tell them to leave your workplace. You can tell them to leave that spreadsheet. You can tell them to leave your, your checkbook. You can tell them to leave, well, you don't have checkbooks anymore. You have bank accounts. What I was saying is, you have the right to walk in blessing and power. And I'm asking you to wake up to who you are in Christ and walk in that power. Amen? Amen. Can we thank God for his power that he's given us? Let's thank him. Let's give him thanks. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Now what I'm going to ask you to do, if